orthogonal tensors are nice because they do not change lengths of vectors and angles between vectors. Geometrically, we can think of rotations and reflections because those types of mappings have exactly these properties. In previous lectures, we found the matrices of reflection and of rotation, so let us use these to see whether these transformations are indeed orthogonal. So let us start with the reflection. T reflects factors in the x2, x3 plane. So suppose it's over here, then your x1 unit factor is reflected to minus x1, so minus 1 over there, and x2 and x3 are just remaining where they are. So over here we find the standard matrix of T. Well, the easiest way to check then whether your transformation is orthogonal is just to look at the matrices and to check whether the uh, matrix of the transpose times the matrix itself is just the identity matrix. And indeed, here this computation is very trivial. Matrix T transpose times matrix of T is indeed the identity matrix. So this reflection indeed uh, is an orthogonal transformation. Let us take a look at a second example. Counterclockwise rotation about the x3 axis. So suppose your x3 axis over here, so you're basically rotating in a plane, in the x1, x2 plane. So you have this uh, cosine theta, sine theta part for the rotation part, and the x3 axis is just staying where it is. So that gives you your rotation matrix. Now let's check whether this is indeed an orthogonal transformation. So take the transpose times the matrix itself, and then we compute, for example, using the row column rule. So rows and columns. So the first element gives you cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine, uh, plus zero equals one. And then the element below that is the second row and the first column minus sine, cosine, plus uh, cosine, sine, plus zero equals in zero. And the third, uh, third term, then zero times cosine plus zero times sine plus one times zero equals zero. So for the first a column of your product, you get one, zero, zero. And you can try the other elements yourself. You get zero, one, zero, and zero, zero, one. So indeed, if you compute uh, the matrix of R transpose times the matrix of R, you get the identity matrix. So this rotation is also an example of an orthogonal transformation. Now, fine, third example where we see some useful property. We see that if Q is orthogonal, then the determinant of its matrix is always plus or minus one. So let us uh, see why this is true. Well, the determinant of Q transpose times Q, well, that is identity matrix, so that identity equals one. Now you know that the determinant of a product is the product of the determinants. So this determinant Q transpose Q equals that Q transpose times that Q. And the determinant of a transpose is the same as the determinant of the original matrix. So this gives you the determinant of Q, matrix of Q squared, which has to be equal to one. So the determinant of Q squared equals one. So that means that the determinant of Q has to be either plus or minus one. So if you have an orthogonal transformation, it's determined it's always plus or minus one. So let us take a look at the examples. The determinant over here equals minus one times one times one equals minus one. And the determinant of this one gives you uh, cosine times cosine plus sine times sine, sine equals one times one is one. So we indeed see examples one and two satisfy that the determinant is either plus or minus one. And we also see, uh, which is true more general, if you just have only a rotation, your determinant will be equal to one. And if you have uh, one uh, uh, reflection as well, uh, for reflections your determinant becomes minus one. So those are some examples of orthogonal transformations and their properties.